was four million Cubs, Columbus, Ohio. Um, got a couple team members here today, so we got Mark over there in the room, got George in the corner on the camera, and then myself, Steve Flaherty. So these are the one million Cups uh, Columbus team members, so feel free to reach out to us at any time if you ever have any questions. Um, anybody here for the first time? Is there a couple, two, three? Okay, so um, what One Million Cups is, is it's a national organization um, that was founded by the Kauffman Foundation uh, that helps embrace entrepreneurship in local communities. So it's kind of an outreach um, started in Kansas City back in 2012, and each week we have a startup come in and tell their story, uh, who they are, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and then we do Q&A. So it's not a pitch event, um, but they still get to share their business and what they're doing, and. Uh, the whole uh, thing is, is it takes a village and uh, it helps foster entrepreneurship in local communities, but also helps the entrepreneurs get the information that they need when they need it uh, and the connections. So this is all our social media and everything, so feel free to tag us, like us, share pictures, whatnot. Um, still growing the organization, so uh, every bit of your network helps our network. So. Feel free to take pictures and then share it to your individual networks and then just tag uh, any of our social media stuff. So uh, if you're ever interested in helping with the organization, whether it be from an organizational role, um, we have caffeinators uh, out of the community, so those are just kind of like ambassadors of the program that help uh, talk about it around the, the different community. And then uh, applications as well. If you ever have any companies, uh, we've got a pretty easy funnel system to go in and apply and then it directs it to our website. Um, that's all backed by Kaufman. Uh, so it helps grow uh, people with sharing their ideas and everything. Just send them our way and get involved. A couple uh, community events. Uh, so there's actually one happening tonight. Um, if anybody's ever heard of Ryan Hawk, Ryan Hawk does a pretty cool podcast. Uh, I believe he's out of the Dayton area. Um, but does a podcast, and he's actually doing a live podcast tonight um, with one of the Cover, Med, Cover My Meds team members um, over at Cover My Meds headquarters. So um, this is a registration event. You do have to go on and register for it, um, but it takes place tonight from 5.30 to 7.30 at Cover My Meds. So it's the podcast live, but it's designed around a business networking um, framework, if you will. And then... Uh, this Saturday, Bunker Labs in lieu of their monthly meeting is doing a veteran food truck challenge up at the new co-hatch at the old pub um, in Polaris. So it's, uh, they converted the, the pub restaurant into a co-hatch now. If you haven't been up, it's a pretty cool place to check out. Um, but they will be having a food truck challenge where um, it's all veteran-owned food trucks uh, from the local area and be doing a um, competition. So that takes place this Saturday, 11.30 to 2, up at Blair's Mall. Yep. We need volunteers. We need volunteers? They need volunteers. Okay. Yeah, we need, I think, three more. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in volunteering, so out there on Facebook, if you're ever, uh, if you want to interested in volunteering for Bunker Labs. Where do they go to volunteer? You can download Point Volunteer on the App Store, and then you can find the event and tap go. Point Volunteer. P-O-I-N-T? Yeah. Okay, so point volunteer. Yeah. Okay. They need like three more people. Only one person signed up, but you know it's that. <sighs> okay. They can also maybe talk to givebesa.org, B-E-S-A, because they organize volunteers. And so if they let them know that they have an event, BESA might send people their way. Nice. Maybe so, yeah. Okay. So volunteers. All right, um, so special announcement, we've been uh, um, talking about this. Uh, we did our first one earlier this month over at Innovate New Albany, um, but something that we're trying here in the Columbus market is to be able to reach the different ecosystems. Um, Columbus is a, it's a decently sized market, um, has a lot of activity happening out in the suburban um, areas as well as at the center here in downtown. Um, so we take 1MC on the road, the first Wednesday of every month. So the first Wednesday of every month, we won't be here at Rev 1. We'll actually be out at one of these. So um, we're trying to finalize today. I think we're going to be at the Dublin Entrepreneurship Center for the July 3rd meeting. Uh, kind of a busy day uh, with Red, White, and Boom and uh, the July 4th festivities. But 
we should uh, hopefully have that finalized here in the next week or so, and then we are going to be going around to the different um, entrepreneurial ecosystems uh, in the same format, and we try to grab a presenter from that uh, ecosystem so to help them um, get their story out there in the one and C format. So uh, first Wednesday of every month, we'll be rotating uh, different venues. So, and then uh, Startup Space is still the, the back end that we're, we're using. We've got the, the, the Kaufman app, but um, Startup Space is, gives us a way to connect with the presenters offline. So, Mike, feel free to join um, Startup Space. Uh, you may have seen it at other one MCs, um, but it gives us a way to help connect uh, if there's any other questions um, that come up after your presentation. So, feel free to download this app. We have a private network on this community. Um, you can just go over to private networks and search and one, one million cups geocoded, geofenced. Um, so it should pop up as a um, private network. So without further ado, um, Michael is uh, Texas based now, right? Yeah. So, but originally has family up here in the Dayton area and everything. Uh, I don't know how many one million clubs you've done, but I know he's traveled the country um, sharing his story uh, about what he's doing um, at multiple one million clubs. So I'd like to welcome him to the stage. I'll hope your presentation and take it away. Throw them in the air and you catch them. 
do it again. And you got and you keep doing that for as long as they can stand it, or you can, right? So he says to me, Dad, do it again. So I did it again. And he says, Dad, do it again. And so I did it again. And he says, Dad, do it again. And I kept doing it and doing it. And so suddenly I had this entire library of books that I had created for my son. Now, here comes the part that's kind of a little bit of a challenge for me. I'm a divorced dad. So I'm not with my son every day, all day, and every night, and I can't read these stories to him every night. And so the challenge was, okay, how can I make story time any time for him? And so that was my thought. But I also realized that it's not just me, okay? I, I'm a lawyer, and I have my firm, and I'm a divorced dad, and so there are tons of reasons why I'm away from my son. I travel quite a bit. And so being in that position, I realized if I'm on a plane, there's not gonna be story time. But I also recognize there are other people who are on other kinds of planes who don't have story time with their kids as well. But there's also people who work different kinds of shifts. There's grandma and grandpa. All these different people want story time to be anytime, and that ought to happen. But how? And so I looked. I said, there's got to be an app, right? There's got to be a way for me to make this happen. And I looked on the stores, and there's nothing. And so I thought, well, if I want this, then other people are going to want this too. Can I build it? So that was the question that I asked, and I said, we've got a problem, can we solve it? And so here you're gonna see, choose your reader, this is how it actually operates. Uh, so if you go to the store, uh, you'll download it, what you'll see is you've got the ability to go in, you say, I wanna record a story, you go in through some categories, you pick the category you want, then you've got your stories that are there, and it's from good to bad to great. When you press the record button, the words are highlighted like karaoke. So you are able to pace yourself as you read through the story. It captures your voice in the microphone of your device and is recording it, matching it along with the pictures and the pages. Once you're through each page, right, you go through and literally you just go page by page. If you, if you make a mistake or if you get a doorbell or a phone call or anything that interrupts you, just start over on that page and keep going. You'll go through and I'll have you on on page two of 10 here, you can see at the bottom if you can there, but I'm gonna jump all the way to 10 in a second so you can see what happens after that. So what you're doing is you are building your voice as the storyteller and capturing it. And the child's experience is very much the same. So jumping to the end, what you're gonna do is then you're gonna save that story and store it locally to your device. Once you've stored it locally, you have the ability to share it. And any other person that is willing to download the app and have this story. So you can share it by email, you can share it by text, and then that link that you're gonna send them, they receive it, they're able, they're able to download your story, and the experience is exactly the same from the user standpoint, the reader and the listener. So the listener hears your voice, sees the words highlighted, sees the pictures. And if you don't even think about how kids learn to read, they learn by pointing at the words as you go. But if you're not there to point, we point for you by highlighting. So that's kind of the idea and how we built this system. Now, if you'd like to download it, there's a QR code. If you have an Apple device, if you literally just open your camera and show that QR code to your camera, it will recognize that that's a QR code to download the app and take you right to the app store. Uh, if you've got a, a, an Android device, you can use the QR reader. And of course, if you go into the app store itself, you can just type in choose your reader and you'll be able to download it. So, now, that's the, the, the story of how this all began and what I did to create it. Where are we now? So we have some things that we're doing and I'm gonna go through some of our challenges and some of our successes. First off here, market awareness. That's our biggest challenge. Uh, because this has never existed before, most people aren't trying to solve the problem because they don't think it's possible to solve it. I got an article that was sent to me last week after one million cups that I did in California and it was a, um, a journalist, a tech journalist, this blew me away. A tech journalist wrote an article that said, I have a great life hack. This was last week that it was published. The life hack was, take a book that your kid likes, take your cell phone, and record your voice reading the story to your kid. And then you can give your kid your cell phone and this book, and they're going to somehow manage pagination and fix it. And I thought, this is not a life hack. This is making the world a worse place, not a better place. So the idea is this person as a tech journalist should have been able to find Choose Your Reader, 
but market awareness is our biggest challenge. So we've been using Facebook. Um, that really wasn't a very good thing, right? It took a long time to get to 200 likes. That, that was not very useful. Uh, we then moved to Instagram and found that Instagram had a lot more uh, sort of activity and traction, so we've been doing that. Uh, but again, still trying to push market awareness. <clears throat> we've also been doing some events where we sponsor people, and so we're very much a health conscious organization, and so we, you know, people running 5Ks, and we, we do all those sorts of things because we're not just about sitting around, but we really want to have this idea that kids need a very well rounded life, and so we want to participate in all these things that are both active and educational. A couple other things here. Uh, you can follow us, we've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, certainly feel free to follow us, connect with us on any of those platforms. Uh, we are available and we love to just connect if you've got ideas, if you've got story ideas, all those sorts of things. We're very much interested in communicating. And if there are events or other kinds of things that we want to highlight, uh, you know, that you may be able to share with us, we'll do that as well. Now, content. Let's talk about that for a second. That was one of the challenges that I thought at the very beginning, right? I wrote five books for my kid, and I thought, well, there's no way you can launch a platform with five books. Uh, but what we're able to do is we're able to mine the public domain. And so the grim fairy tales, we've got handful of those and more coming, right? We were able to do uh, Mother Goose. We have six Mother Goose books, all right? Each book having multiple uh, nursery rhymes in there. Oh, you just lost our... I'll just keep going while that's up there. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're able to then take the public domain works and really use those to mine for the purposes of creating this content. One of the things that was interesting is that most people don't realize that essentially Disney was created off public domain works. And so when you think about the ability to do that, uh, that's really what we were exploring. One of the challenges has been that we wanted to be able to have a subscription-based model for sales. We didn't want to do a per book purchase. We wanted to have it so that you would pay a single fee and you would just be able to record as much as you want. Uh, so the public domain also really helped us to be able to create a library faster, more efficiently, and be able to then push content. So now we are in the position of essentially being very much like Netflix and, and Hulu and Amazon Prime where there's all this effort to generate content, but we can do that in a way that is a lot better, cheaper, faster. So I'll give you a statistic to think about. The traditional publishing world, you're looking at, to get one book, on one bookshelf takes you about two years, twenty-five to $30,000. And so when you hear about things like the Harry Potter story, if you know that story where this woman writes this book, she tries to get it published and no one's interested. It's not that no one was interested, it's that they didn't think that they could spend that much money over that much time and then recoup that with profit. That was the challenge. And so they rejected her book over and over and over again. And of course they were wrong because that that property has entirely been a successful venture for them. But it took that long. It took her, I think, 10 years to get there. We have been able through the way that we are, our, our platform works. It doesn't take two years and 25 to $30,000. We're able to get a book in 150 countries. It takes us 60 days and 1,000 months. So totally changing the way that publishing is working and thinking about it and reaching the consumer. So, Couple of other thoughts, and you guys just give me a shout when you're up here. Right? Uh, so, a couple of other thoughts we'll go through is once we're able to do that, what we're now saying is if you are a content owner, we're able to then pay you for a license for that content. What we do is instead of actually having the content owner, if you know anything about book publishing, uh, the content owner is always concerned with the costs that are going to be passed along and then the count. And so, how many books did I sell? How many books did I sell? And that, that drives the discussion. There are actually companies that are in existence that will help content owners to then keep track of how many books are sold because there's a discussion between the publisher and the content owner about whether or not a book was actually sold. We eliminate all of those issues by turning it into an annual license. And so we're able to say, here's your annual license for the year. If your book becomes wildly successful, you're only locked in for a year, you're able to renegotiate with us for next year. And if it is wildly successful, of course we want to have it on the platform and keep it. And so we 
and pay you a little bit more next year because you are so popular. <coughs> You're bringing people to us, so we're going to reward you for that. That's a totally different system, and it also incentivizes the authors and content owners to work together because they're able to then say, I'm not concerned if publishing your book and your book and your book is going to hurt my book, right? We're all in this together because we're all benefiting. And so that's a meaningful way to align interests. So let's keep going in terms of uh, some of the other things we've got. We have uh, Tall Tales is another category that we have. And you know, if you think about sort of American folklore, uh, we also have Sherlock Holmes coming out. And so that's one of the things that Sherlock Holmes does is allows us to reach an older audience. And so that's what we're doing with that. Then the other thing that I realized is, this is take a deep breath. But this is take a deep breath in French and in Spanish. So we're taking now, today, we are in four languages. And so what we can do with these books is push that process to create the library. And now, if you understand how kids work, right? My son could read, quote unquote, I say read. He could see a word that he had heard multiple times. And so he knew how to say that word. So one day we're taking my son out and I was with my, my then wife and we both met at Duke. And so this, she, he's seen the word Duke, we watched Duke basketball. And so he knows that word. This guy walks out of the store with the word Duke on his shirt. My son was, I think, 18 months, not quite two. And he said, Duke. Now, my son can't read. That's familiarity. What we are able to do with the app, though, is take that same idea of familiarity with words, and now we're even able to take one book that the kid is familiar with and translate it into a totally different language. And because they already know what's happening in the story, they're able to pick up what's, what these words mean, and we're actually developing for them with language skills. So you can actually have a kid that speaks three, four different languages by the time they're actually seven years old. So using Choose Your Reader is both a, a relationship uh, developing app, it's also then an app that helps with uh, literacy and language building skills. So what are the challenges that we're having? Right now, we're, we're just really looking at getting market awareness. So we've got some specific environments where we want to get into. And really, the ask that I have had for the One Million Cups community is if you have any relationships in these spaces, then let me know. So I talk about schools. This is a great tool for a school. If you can remember going to school, at least when I was in school, right, you would, you would go into class, and let's say they wanted you to read Moby Dick, and the teacher would have 20 copies of Moby Dick, and you would go up and you would sign your name on a line that says, I received copy 105, and then another kid would sign and receive 106, and then at the end of it all, you would give the copy back, right? That's how it all worked when I was in school. Well, a couple of things. Number one, you had to have the books, you had to have the storage for the book, and if the teacher wanted to assign something, they had to actually make sure that it was available. No more. With the way that our platform works, when the school says Moby Dick is in our library, it is immediately available to every teacher to be assigned. And then the last thing is, if you're able to then, we have this now, if I read to my son, when the story is finished, it gets pushed back to me, a message that says, your son read this story tonight. We have the same ability with the school and a teacher. I now know if I've got 20 students and I assign chapter one of Moby Dick, I should get 20 emails. And we now, so that's now a verification process. The other thing we can do is, if you have a kid and you're recording these stories as the kid is learning to read over the course of the year, the teacher can actually play for mom and dad what the kid was able to read like in September, December, March, May, so you're able to even track the progress of a job. So there are a lot of different things that we can do, and these are these various industries. If you know anyone, if you have any relationships in any of these industries, that's really my ask, is that you connect with me and help me to connect with those people, because these are places that I believe really would benefit from Choose Your Reader. And that's the story, as easy as ABC. Up to Q and A now. Who's first? I know there's a lot of questions out here. It's got to be. Oh, there we go. How have you been able to monetize this business model with the app? What are, you, what are your thoughts there? So currently, we are. I'm not worried about the money. Uh, revenue will come when the product and the market 
match. And so my approach has been to get the product right and to get the market to be aware of it. Downstream, just so you know, it is a subscription model. So $5 a month, $50 a year is the plan, uh, but not focused on that. We are currently giving it away free. So if you want to use it, check it out, have fun, knock yourself out, uh, totally free. Uh, so yeah, I'm not worried about revenue now, but that is the, the model that I would anticipate using. So I'm wondering about uh, the app. Is it fully cross-platform? Like I have an Android device, but my, my girls have Amazon Kindle Fires. Can I record it on the app and then it, it, it'll send out to the iPhone device or a Kindle Fire device that they can watch the phone? Yeah, so it is cross-compatible iOS and Android, but not off those two platforms. So Kindle, uh, I think, is sort of a modified Android platform, so it's not truly compatible with that. But any standard Android device, any standard iOS device, it will work. What do you feel like has been uh, Choose Your Leader's greatest success so far? Oh gosh, our greatest success uh, really comes from our greatest challenge, which was the tech side. Uh, I am not a developer, I'm a lawyer, and so I have this background purely of understanding I do a lot of work with companies that are in tech space, so I understand technology, but I am not able to actually build anything. So, in my head, I was able to describe how this would work. I could just say, oh yeah, here's how it's gonna work, and talk to a developer. The first developer I used said, that sounds great, and then a year later said, it still sounds great, we can't do it. And so I had to get a different developer who finally was able to achieve it. So that, my greatest success is the ability to translate what was in my head as an idea into a functioning app that can be used and specifically cross-platform, right? Because one of the challenges was you can't have it be an Android uh, platform device and only share with other Android devices. That was, that was never going to work. So that's been our greatest success is getting this to market in a way that looks and feels like a polished app. It does not come across as a, a beta model. I have one over here that I'll come work for. Um, so, is this a mechanism for personal publishers, or like so? My cousins wrote a couple books, has published them. Um, very noisy market, you know. Friends and family buy it on Amazon and everything. But is this a way for to monetize that for personal publishers and everything? I mean, you wrote a lot of stories, got it illustrated. Is there a potential for personal publishing and/or taking pictures and creating your own story without the so let me take those two questions. The first one, absolutely. So what we're able to do is a publisher that has enough content, and I literally have a call set up for tomorrow with a publisher who we're going to give her publishing house their own portal on the app. So when you go in and you look at categories and you see Grim Fairy Tales and Mother Goose, you're gonna see their publishing logo. And when you go in, you're gonna see their stories only. So we're able to do that. We're able to even take an author who is written but hasn't illustrated yet, just like me. We have our own group of illustrators now who are tested through the content that we created, and now you're able to get your works illustrated through our network at a price that you cannot beat. Um, it's just, and again, we shepherd you through the whole process as well. We have a specific person who is dedicated to content acquisition and creation and refinement, and so that person literally walks you through the whole process you get to pick the illustrator that you want, and then they manage the whole thing for you. So we're able to do that. What we do not have is the ability for you to load your own content, because that would mean that I would be giving you access to our server. But if you have content and you send it, we would be able to then load it, but it would be available to everyone, not just you. Is, is there a way for people, just sorry to follow up, a uh, way for people to, like if I created a story, could I share revenue from people downloading no, we pay you a license, that's what I was saying. You, okay. you get an annual license for that right out of the gate, so you don't even have to worry about whether or not it gets shared or downloaded or anything, you're paying straight up, I can get it. So I had one in here and here. Yeah. Um, have you spoken to any daycare centers? I can just imagine if you yeah. went to Goddard and said, um, have your, the parents of the kid that dropped their that drop kids off at your school can now have this be a differentiator versus the other daycare centers. 
um, and a way for the parents to still feel connected to the <coughs> mom that work. So I have not reached out to daycare centers. I, I've certainly thought about it. People have mentioned that before. The challenge with daycare centers is that making sure that the revenue makes sense. So uh, the daycare center would essentially be really promoting to the parents, yeah. right? That you should yeah. actually download the app, record the story, and send it to us. Uh, so the daycare center is really more of a, uh, a referral network or affiliate marketing. And so that's certainly something that we're looking at, uh, but I've not actually done it yet, because as you can imagine, the daycare center market is extremely uh, sort of dispersed across any metro area, let alone the country. So that's a, a huge undertaking to reach out to whatever might be 100 daycare centers. So it's something that I want to do. If I could buy things like conferences, I'm headed to a conference next week for educators. And so that's a really beneficial way to reach a lot of people at once. So that's kind of the, the approach that I'm taking is get in spaces where a lot of the same people are there, tell our story, and then theoretically exactly what you're describing happens. And sorry, one more. So just so I understand, so Mother Goose is on there, but you could have had Harry Potter on there. That's because right. Mother Goose is able to download because a certain amount of time has elapsed that you talked about that. Yeah. That's exactly right. Now I could license Harry Potter, yeah, but you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> blow my budget right out of the water immediately. So, uh, but the idea is over time, if we grow, Harry, uh, Harry Potter is coming to me. Dr. Seuss is coming to me because we've got a patent on this, so they're not going to be able. So if you want to talk about this afterwards, we can. But if you really want to make this work for schools, every state has state standards. Yep. I would spend some time aligning this to the actual state standards. So when you go into a school, you can say, hey, this is grade level one, English language arts, uh, standard number one, grade level indicator number four. It's going to improve that because that's what they're all looking for. And, and in Ohio specifically, we have the third grade reading guarantee, which means by third grade, every child should be able to read. And so if you connect it to any of the indicators that lead up to that, a child can't pass third grade until they pass the third grade reading, reading guarantee. So it's what helps kids to, pass, to, to be able to read. And you were, you were talking about like how kids learn to read. They first learn to read because we read to them. Then they learn to read because we read with them. Then they learn to read because they read on their own, right? So this is a great way. The highlighting of the words really helps a kid to follow along, right? Exactly. Ultimately, we want kids to be able to follow along the words and be able to read it themselves. Yeah. So, I think if I were, if you were to spend time there, you have a really strong sell, and I would go with community schools first, simply because they have a lot of freedom to uh, around the curriculum mm -hmm. uh, and money. So, in yeah. Ohio, that I, that's where I would recommend you start. Fantastic, thank you. So, I was thinking about what you said as far as 
tr going from a book you know in English to a book you know in other languages. And I know personally for me, when I was younger, there was a book that I had memorized, but it was like, and my parents didn't even cover up the words to see who I was actually reading or if I had just memorized it. And they, I was just thinking this might have a useful tool to go into ESL, do you know what that is? Absolutely. Yeah, so that might be good for, even in the school districts, they have certain programs, so they're, it's for people coming from China or Spanish speaking countries or anywhere like that where, kids are trying to learn English, but they have books even in their native language that they know from their countries that you could try and figure out a way to, even if you like press the word and it would tell you in another language, or simple little things to help with ESL and learning an another language from English to other languages, but also from French or Spanish or Japanese, whatever language, to English also. That might be helpful. I totally agree. We're, we're definitely already there. Yes. Okay. And as far as the magazine thing that he was saying, I know when I was younger, uh, Highlights Magazine was always big for kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is now, but even like getting into like, magazines that parents read with kids, you know, like Highlights had stories that they would meant for kids in them. And I think a lot of those are published online, so you could probably uh, figure out a way to work with them or put even an ad or even putting their stories on your app so kids can reread them and don't have to say, save the story in paper copy. Yeah, I actually thought about that. Can I just really sell the platform to a place like Highlights and license it to them and say, hey, you just have Highlights as an app now and you don't have your paper costs. You don't have your distribution costs. Uh, they're gone now. I so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember those were in like doctor's offices and all over the place when I was younger, but I don't yeah. know what the actual paper, paper circulation now is in the digital age. Right. I have no clue. But they, it they could be something right like right Oh, really? Okay, okay. Oh, or even like McGraw Hill would be cool to like somehow get into the textbooks for a middle school. You could figure out a way. Yep, that's also. Now, McGraw Hill, I talked to someone from there a couple of weeks ago. They're a giant. Oh, of right? course. And, I'm, and so it's hard for them to sort of appreciate that there's a, a need and a match. Mm. But again, my whole point is grow to a point where I'm, I'm in their space. They are aware of my existence, mm -hmm. and now there's a need to have this conversation. That's at least the, the as, current plan. And as far as starting out with schools, I understand you don't want to start like going to little individual schools, but the way I see it is if you can go to a, an individual Montessori school or even like Columbus School for Girls and use that with their elementary school, schools with a reputable name translate to other schools even if they're smaller. So like, if you did want to go to a Goddard, for example, which is a big chain, if you have smaller schools under your belt, they'll be more likely to take you on. I think that's, I think that's a fair point, yeah. I could agree with that. Um, so this is a, a marketing question. Um, so I work in like the mobile app space as well, thank you. Um, and one of my challenges is that people don't like understand like in a sentence, like what um, the point app is. Um, and I, it probably should be like five minutes into your presentation to be like, okay, wow, that has a lot of value. Um, and it's really hard and like actually understand like what you're doing. Um, and like with marketing and things like that, if you have like a couple sentences in an email or like a, a Facebook ad or a magazine article, um, you know, it's, it's, is it hard to get across like what true your reader actually is and, and what the value actually is? I would say that it is hard for people in a nutshell, one or two sentences, to understand how it works. Yeah. The value proposition is sold in 10 seconds. Uh, for me, when I say to someone, you can read to your child from anywhere, anytime, even if you're asleep, through choose your reader. Right? All of it. Now, you have no idea how I'm going to actually deliver that. But if I tell you that, you say, I can read to my kid even when I'm asleep. I don't know. Yeah, right? If you travel, if you're a divorced parent, if you're a grandparent, you separate from the grandkids, the, the, the sell of reading to your kids or grandkids, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you're available. Yes. The challenge is, challenge. 
That's not the challenge. The challenge is when I say that, people's brains start to solve the problem, right? They start to create what it is that I've created. And then what they get may not match what they thought it was going to be, right? So many of them think, for example, that it's a live chat. So that's why I have to say things like, even when you're asleep so that they understand that no, you are not actively engaging in the moment. This is designed to create a library. That's why it's called Choose Your Reading. The kid can literally decide, tonight I want grandma to read Little Red Riding Hood. And it doesn't matter if grandma is even still alive or not. Grandma is reading Little Red Riding Hood. And so uh, that, that message, now I don't usually talk about it in terms of the, the death of the reader, because it tends to be fairly morbid, uh, but, but that's the point, is that we're also creating even a legacy item beyond what you're talking about in the moment. So that's, you know, now grandma's not reading to you. Grandma's reading to your grandkids, theoretically, right? If you think about it. Uh, so that, that message gets across. But uh, again, how I do it, people don't even have a clue when they start out. That's why I have to really say, get into the app, try it out. And then it becomes obvious. <laughs> The, the biggest book event that happens in the United States every single year is Book Expo USA. It is the preeminent event in the world where people who are content creators, who are or authors, who are publishers go to 70, 80,000 people a year. It's an industry event. It either happens in uh, Chicago at the Corning Place, New York at the Javits Center, LA at the LA Convention Center, and it's usually June and July. Okay. Uh, I hope that you, you, you definitely need to have a presence there. So I mean, it is the inside the publishing industry. Hollywood studios go there to find books to make movies out of. You know, it, it is just a the preeminent thing to be at. Awesome, thank you. So I think this is great. Thanks for coming and sharing. Um, sort of following on the messaging point, for me it was really easy to understand. Um, you know, read a book to someone else that can listen to your voice. Once it got sort of fuzzy is when, you know, is this a platform for me to publish my own book and, um, you know, I can write the story, but someone else can draw the pictures. I, it, for me, it feels like, number one, the market's way bigger for parents that are willing to read a story and have the children listen as opposed to actually write their own story. Um, it seems like as far as having a simple value proposition as well as a bigger first entry to market, would be focused on getting parents to download the existing content and then you know once you get a little bit of traction then go to publish your own stories and maybe that's me not completely understanding or just being wrong but that's what it just feels like well just so we're clear that is what we're doing we do not have a publish your own story platform this is our content your voice yeah yes so just so but that then, then like when um, someone asked about writing their own story you said they didn't get a license Yes, but you are now coming to me as a publisher. You are coming to me as a content publisher if you do that. You're not coming to me and saying, hey, I want my son to hear my story. You're saying, I want the world yeah. to hear my story. Okay, so yeah, I, that would be a misunderstanding then, but yeah, that seems like it makes it more complicated, but. Yeah, it's not, certainly it's not something that I'm pushing as a value proposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a, hey, if you have a story, bring it to us. This is what Choose Your Reader is for, no. Uh, the average person does not have content, right? So the average person has kids, and so we're focused on that. For sure. yeah. So I just, uh, as you mentioned, oh, sorry, as you mentioned, uh, having grandparents talk to their kids from the grave, it's kind of grim, but it's actually a, a really powerful. Uh, it's a powerful opportunity, I think, uh, because I, like I know my mom is constantly buying the kids shit to make sure they remember her right. uh, and this is so two thoughts on this one how easy is the app for uh, elderly to use and two uh, is there a way to market to them so they can come to the parents or the their grand you know, the parents of their grandkids and say hey can I do this for them uh, how do you get in in their mind so they understand that they can do this so your first question how easy is it I intentionally built it with very big, colorful, bright buttons with the expectation that that was going to be useful for both three, four, five-year-olds and 60, 70, 80-year-olds. So I, 
that was very intentional that the you know people who are in their 30s and 40s who are tech savvy they're going to be able to use I mean, Facebook has so much content on a single screen no I wanted it to be something where a very young child or a very sort of senior adult could be able to use it so okay, cool. that's first okay. second question was essentially about that um, so and I want to make sure I understood what you were really asking me there how do you get it how do you appeal to the grandparents and get them to want to go to the their kids and their grandkids and say, hey, can I do this for you? How do you get in, the, in their So I think mind? this is a marketing question, Correct. right? I think at the end of the day, it's a decision that I have to make. Now that I've got a refined product and we're still tinkering, so even just yesterday I was on the phone with the developer about what we're doing here in June in terms of modifications and upgrades, but I expect that come July, that will be six months of refinement, mm -hmm. and I will be more or less done with the app as a refining process for a significant amount of time, sure. three months or so. Uh, once that happens, I am full bore into marketing. And so uh, connecting with AARP and getting some information out, I'm prepared to do things like, if an organization has, a, a, a readership has some kind of connection to a community, I will pay you money for every download that comes through your channel. I'm certainly looking at all kinds of options and how do I create that that affiliate relationship with various organizations that are going to push the app and then make those connections for me. And then when grandma opens the app and subscribes and pushes the story to mom, I'm either letting grandma share one, one subscription across two devices mm -hmm. or a family package of five devices. And so that whole group of people is connected yeah. and everybody that's got a device has the story. So that's how we're sort of driving that. Super engaging. We're running up on well, a little past 9.30, which is okay. Sorry about you guys, but I want to be sensitive to people that you know, have other things scheduled. We've got two more questions on the board, then we'll do our final MC question. And then feel free to hang out after the network. This is a super engaging topic. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, one market I had a question about where it was obviously healthcare. Um, have you looked to reach out to like St. Jude's or Nationwide Children's? Because there's a lot of times where parents have others children they can't be with their child at the same all at the same time and the kids spend a lot of time alone yes so that is absolutely i think a key market is that idea that when kids are in hospital and not just when mom or dad can't be there but the entire family right aunts uncles cousins brothers sisters need to be able to connect with that child and frankly the entertainment options are fairly limited so a hundred percent agree that yes that is a key market to be I'm also looking at it from the other side. Uh, grandma is now in a retirement community and she's separated from the family. As the kid gets older and the kid becomes a reader, grandma read to you when you were four, five, six. You should be reading to grandma when you're 14, 15, 16. So yeah, I, I see that going both ways for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not such a, 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 a new, I mean, it, it's, it's funeral homes now offer a service. Mm -hmm. that you can record your message uh, while the person's alive and uh, you know a memorial of that message can be played at funerals you know and you know people are talking from the grave now so I I think that's a huge market of uh, when you're talking about the, 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 the elder community and having kids you know like you said both ways reverse the kids are reading stories to the elderly person that might be in a, in, in a, in a living assistant, you know, center, this, that, and the other, or that grandma, grandfather are reading books to unborn kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think that's a huge market. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the last question we usually ask is what can we as a community do for you? I think you made that pretty clear a little earlier <laughs> in your presentation, so I want to sneak in one of my own questions here, and then by all means, please repeat and refresh us on what we can do as a community. So thinking entrepreneurially, um, as a small business consultant for many years, the biggest question I get is, hey, I've got, I've got this idea for an app. Everybody's got an idea for an app. Nobody knows how to get an app made. Can you tell us briefly a little bit about what you needed to do to get to a place where you could have somebody build that app? And I'm assuming bootstrap, it sounds like you just kind of paid for it out of your own pocket. Absolutely. So the challenge of getting an app built Again, I'm assuming you're going to have a developer do it, you're not fooling yourself. 
Assuming that's the case, the challenge first is to really understand your user experience. Forget the code for a moment. All right, take a piece of paper, which is exactly what I did. I, just, I used PowerPoint to actually map the user's experience. And I said, okay. And, and to be clear, the way it works today does not match the way that it was on PowerPoint back in 2016. But I had to start somewhere. So that was where I started, was PowerPoint, flowchart, make it make sense to you, and then cut out steps. That's the next thing. Once you've outlined the flow, it's too long, it's, I guarantee you. And so how do you minimize steps? How do you condense that content so that the choices are all on one screen without overcrowding the screen at the same time? So. Start focusing on the flow and then how you can bring things together so that choices are together instead of, right, step one, do this, and then step two. If you've got a 12 step process to record a book, in this app, once you log in, you, I want to record a story, here's the category, here's the story, push record. That's, I mean, I, I really want it to be that short and simple. So that's the next thing. Once you've done that, get a referral. Don't go hunting for developers on your own. Everybody's awesome until they have to do the job. Find someone that can say, this person was awesome for me. And then the last thing is understand the platform you're building on. Even if you're not a techie. I, I met a guy several months ago now. He's developed an app and he came to me and said, hey, here's the app I built. And download it, check it out, tell me what you think. You've got this great app and I trust your opinion. I go to download the app, I can't find it on the app store. So then I reach back out and say, hey, I tried to download your app, but I can't find it. Oh, it's only on iOS. Oh, no. Don't build on a platform that's just iOS or Android unless you have a very good reason to do that. Because you're gonna run into Android versus iOS, and then you've got all this marketing that you've done, and now a person believes you're not available, and then they tune you out. So I strongly recommend React Native as a platform because you can develop once, launch once, it's available to everyone. Uh, but understand the platform decision you're making because React Native is, I don't know, roughly four or five years old now. Uh, some people can't do it. Some people don't have the experience with it. And so they'll try to steer you to individual platforms with an argument that says, oh, but you know, if you wanna, if you wanna make changes in the iOS version, and, and I find that to be usually junk. Uh, so that's what I would do. Flow, reduce the flow, get a referral, and understand the platform. And once you've done that, your developer should be able to press go and go off from there. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, one more time, what we can do for you. Yeah, so if you think about connections, relationships that you've got, uh, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn individually, and then I gave you our, our social media contacts. You can also email me, info at chooseyourreader.com reach out and I'll, obviously I'll stick around here now. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm looking for is relationships that you identify in your personal network that you think these people ought to hear about it and then you can make that match for me and uh, watch this thing take off. Awesome, thank you very much. Mike Bowles, everyone, thank you. Uh, we have a couple of these already, remember it's at 1MC Cup. Uh, and again, folks, stick around, do a little networking. I do have a question for the audience. And for the prize, this is a prize, this is a giveaway. Whoever gets the closest will get this great 1MC. This is actually commemorative, right? Because this is one of the last of the batch of cups. So the question is, what year did the Kaufman Foundation create, start 1MC? 1 1 Julie? 2012. 2012, all right, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, we don't have a speaker for next week yet, but we've got a couple people in the pipeline, so we may be able to give it out uh, sooner than later. Let you guys know who we have. As always, we appreciate you guys coming out and taking the time. The incredible feedback that you give to our presenters. Remember, if you know anyone that has an idea, even if it's just an idea and they have nothing in writing, let them know to go to our onemillionworks.com slash present, fill out the application, and we will work with them to get them up here and present their idea. Thanks, guys.